As you're working with project code and you have a whole chunk that's working, you want to then add a whole bunch of new features. But the thing that you're afraid of is maybe putting in 100 lines of code, maybe nothing works again. And so you want to have something you can roll back to and then continue on with if you really mess things up. And what that means is you want to make a copy. We're going to go down here and duplicate our code here. We can say that we'll always have this working if we need it, but we want to go on now and use this copy now one of the things you want to do here is not call it copy, you probably want to rename this and rename this as Rev1 for revision 1 and say OK. You're going to have to again go down here and right mouse click and set it as active project so you can continue on making changes. Besides the functions we've already written, we're going to have to add an init function. Its purpose is going to be to clear the LCD and turn off all the LCD colors as well as clear the four digit display. Because before anything happens when we hit our reset or just start up our code, we have to start with both the LCD and the 4-digit display clear. So this is a function that's going to be called up right at the start of main before it gets into the main for loop which is going to be our mainline loop. Okay, global variables are something you were not supposed to use in PRG 1 and 2, but we're using global variables to simplify our programming, and in some cases, such as interrupt service routines, global variables are the only way to pass information from the interrupt service routine to the main line. We're going to declare PIR detected in our global variable declaration section above the main, and in main, in our global variable initialization section, we're going to make it zero to start off with. And in the interrupt service routine, it's going to change this to one indicating that motion has definitely been detected. Now, also selector is another global variable that we're going to have to declare in the global variable declaration section and set its initial value to zero in the main line because when selector zero, no choice was made from the control pad because you haven't hit any buttons. When you do hit a button, such as the one button, and this has to be the first one it hits, then it's going to change selector to one indicating that it's got an exclamation mark B1 we hit 2, it's going to then have selector 2 and then selector 3. So it's going to take on these different values depending on the different alarm statuses that you've got. Once you shut down the alarm, it's going to set it back to 0, so it's going to start the whole process again. Because selector was originally set to 0, that means while it's 0, it's going to stay inside these brackets. Now, only when you hit the 1 key, you're going to get an exclamation mark B1. And when we get exclamation mark B1, it's going to then have selector equals 1 set where it's no longer going to go through this code. But let's take a little deeper look at this. So if you don't hit anything, it's definitely going to just go around the, this section of the while here. But when you hit any button there, it's going to say exclamation mark B. But then it's going to have another global variable BNUM here that's going to say, let me put the character into BNUM so we can check to see if it is a 1. If it's a 1, then and only then will selector be changed to a 1. If it's a 2, it's going to reject it. If it's a 3, it's going to reject it. Only if you have exclamation mark B1 is selector going to be 1, which means that you can't just go from 0 to 3 or something like that. You have to actually go to 1, then 2, then 3. So the next bit of code you're going to have after this is going to be while selector equals equals 1 once you actually hit the 1 and it goes on to the next bit of code. In Blackboard under Labs, what you're going to find is near the bottom Project Overview Structure. And if you click on that, you're going to get the same materials we just looked at in the video and all the way down to including while selector equals equals zero. Now if we happen to go to page three of this document, you're going to see something called a structured diagram. And a structured diagram is a pictorial way of looking at your coding to make sure that it makes sense and is going to be easy to code up. A structured diagram diagram is really a simplified NASI Schneiderman diagram and you'll look at that later. There's some more details as we go through the video near the end and in this file as well it takes you through all the different structures for these. Now the first structure we're going to see in here is we're going to see something with a bar here and a bar here which means that we're calling up a function. So we're calling up the alarm on function. Then after this we're going to have while selector equals equals one which is very similar code to what we just looked at. Now these corners of this box indicates there's a bracket here and a bracket here. So this is the while goes from here to here. Everything fits inside this while. Now the first thing we're going to see is an if statement and it says if blue dot gets e equals equals exclamation mark and that's an if statement. Right after that we're going to see another if statement if blue dot gets e equals equals b. Now if it's not an exclamation mark it's going to say no and go out. If it does exclamation mark but not b it's going to go out. And if it says exclamation mark b it's then going to do like we did before b num equals blue dot get c. And it says if it's a 2 
or a 4, you're going to go through the S branch, but if it's not a 2 or 4, you're just going to fall out. So it won't work for 1 and 3, just 2 and 4. So when you're down here, you say, well, is BNUM equal to 4? If it is, we're going to run the alarm off code, which is a function again. Then we're going to wait 2 seconds and say selector equals 0, so it's going to go back and start the whole process again. Now, if it happens to be a 2, though, it's going to then do selector equals 2 and go on to that next section of code. While selector equals equals 2, and it's very, very simple. It says while selector equals 2, and this is the brackets that we've got here, it's going to say alarm arming, which is the function that it's calling up first. Then it's going to do the seg counter function. Then it's going to do the alarm armed function. Then it's going to set selector equals 3. This is the one for a selector equals equals 4. It's going to call up the function alarm disable while selector equals 4. The brackets again here, as you get exclamation mark B and 2, it's going to say selector equals 2. If you do exclamation mark B and it's not this, then it's going to say is it 4. If it's 4, it's going to do selector equals 4. And if it's not, you're just going to go out through here. So these are the structures that you can see graphically, which is going to hopefully make more sense of your code. On page two of the same document, if we take a look here, this is one of the more critical parts of the project, and this has to do with the PIR interrupt portion of the code. This is the part of the code that says while selector equals equals three, which should show up right after while selector equals equals two. This is where this code goes. And one of the things that I forgot to put into the init code was this statement here, PIR underscore device dot disable IRQ, because right at the start of our code, we want to disable the IRQ because we don't want it setting PIR detected to one right away. We want to do that after it's done the countdown which is after it drops out of selector equals equals two. So once it drops out, does the countdown, and it says motion sensing, then we want to enable the IRQ, and then say PIR detected equals zero, and then sit in a while loop here that says while it's still zero, wait a tenth of a second. Is it still zero? Wait a tenth of a second, which is gonna give it time for the motion detector to actually set the PIR detected variable from zero to one and when it finally does then it's going to come down here disable the IRQ set the PIR detected back to zero so it's not going to interrupt again and then it's going to flash five times and then set selector equal to four by combining the structured diagrams and converting them to code and actually using the code that you've got you should be able to finish this project